Hello, my name is Eric Washington, and this is another edition of my memoirs. I'm just going to jump right into it. I want to talk today about my personal fears about my degree. I'm not trying to do an inspirational thing or trying to do some beat around the bush, like tell you what to do sort of thing. But instead, I, I really am just trying to pour out me. And if it relates to you, it relates to you. So here we go. So anyone who knows me, there's two sides to me and not in any like weird way, but like there's the academic version of me. For those who know me, I'm currently in grad school in a degree in which I am trying to work towards my passion, uh, my nine to five passion, which is kind of a loaded way to phrase it because what I wanna do, which is social justice, civil rights, human rights, advocacy, and activism and action, that's not, a, that's not a day job, that's not an eight to five thing, that is a lifelong commitment. However, the other side of me who has had aspirations and goals for a very long time to be part of the entertainment industry. If you know me, I create music, I actively go to auditions for films, television, I've done stage plays before, I've hosted podcasts before, I've been on radio shows before. So really anything uh, entertainment is something that I've always wanted to do, anyone who knows me. So I do a good job, more or less, about keeping them very separate. Part of that is out of professionalism, another part of that is out of fear, yeah, really just fear. And so here's my fear, my genuine fear, and this is for anyone who, who feels where I'm coming from, my genuine fear is that I won't be able, or employers won't take me seriously if they find out about my entertainment pursuits. And it's not like I'm saying anything wild or crazy or disrespectful, even in my music, which is hip hop and like a neo R&B kind of thing. It's not like I'm saying anything wild or crazy. But I'm worried that employers won't take me seriously and hire me after I get this degree. And then therefore I don't have a day job to pay rent and pay bills and pay student loans while I'm working on my music and going to audition. So that is a genuine fear of mine because I feel like we live in a world where you can't chase a creative passion and be a professional at once or at, at the same time. You have to, if you're gonna be a professional, you have to be a professional creative. But any creative knows you don't just so happen to become a professional creative. Um, you know, professional, the definition being that you're paid for your content or paid for your creativity. Well, that doesn't just happen on day one. You have to work up to that. And any creative knows that having a day job is immensely helpful in order to eventually transition into your day job being your creative job. However, I'm in this kind of limbo where I wanna do social justice work uh, as a living, which is kind of a sad thing to say because you eventually want equity so you don't, you know, so you don't have to make it a living, but I digress. So for someone who wants to do social justice for a living as your day job, that's a lifelong commitment. And as someone who is genuinely passionate about his creative outlets, that's a lifelong commitment. And some people would argue, well, everyone's gotta grow up, get at, be in reality, put their dreams aside. Well, I don't believe in that. Maybe it's because I'm still young, but I, I even feel like even if I'm 60 and haven't made a dime off of my work, I'm still gonna be creating because this is a different sort of memoir. This is for a different one, but I wouldn't live with myself uh, knowing that I didn't at least try or that I didn't at least put the work in to continue to try and make a living off of my art. Different memoir, let's go on, let's keep going with this with this one. So yeah, so I feel, so that's that's a genuine fear of mine. And then in, in my field, and for those who know me, you know what my field, field is, and I believe I've said it before, on this memoir series. In my field, pigeonholed isn't the word, but for lack of a better phrase, people in my degree are sort of pigeonholed into these really exclusive or, or important or prestigious jobs, usually in the public sector. There's some private sector too. And that means there's a lot of extensive background checks and extensive research on you. And I have a clean record. I've, I've applied for many numerous things, whether they be organizations for membership or whether they be jobs, clean record. And it's not as if I'm trying to get into clandestine work per se, but if I were to, for some reason, find an opportunity or a door would open into clandestine work and they see that I have a website and an Instagram and a Facebook and a Twitter and all these things with clearly my face on them because I'm promoting my art 
which is which is another business as well. It's not a side hustle. It's not a hobby. It's a second source of income that I'm trying. It's it's a secondary source of income that I'm trying to make my primary source of income. That's another memoir as well. But the point being is, is if they see that, I'm worried that I lose out on a job. Again, not trying to really get into clandestine work. I'm not really trying to get necessarily into public sector work. Um, I would definitely do that if they, if there just so happens to be this division that works in social rights uh, and social justice and human rights and civil rights that I've never heard of before, but until I hear about it, I've never heard of that. So it's usually gonna be INGO or NGO. The point being overall, and this is probably a fear for any creative, is that I personally fear that I'm gonna lose out on a great job opportunity that will help me pay the bills, pay rent, pay student loans, and because I'm a creative and I put myself out there for the entire world to see in the hopes that I can generate income from my art and I don't really have an answer for that I guess for all my creators out there I would just encourage us to just keep our head up keep the fight be a great professional nine to five eight to six whatever be a great professional be be a marketable candidate a competitive candidate to get a day job hopefully in one that you'd be willing to still utilizing your creative pursuits but still be a great candidate be a great competitor for the job market get your job get your bag get your coin pay your live live comfortably so that way you can go to auditions you can create your art you can distribute your music you can do write your book whatever you need to do um and then just keep your head up and just understand that you know there, there's always going to be a way and i guess that's something that i have to constantly remind myself too there's always gonna be a way, and everything's gonna work out, uh, both cre creatively and and professionally. Again, those really aren't the create word. The, the those aren't the best words, or the correct ones. But I digress. So yeah, creatives, people who want to create, people who want to balance both suitable income and a creative income. Not suitable income, stable income, creative income. Just keep your head up, keep it going. Don't give up on either. Make sure that you're being smart with your finances. That's a different video. Just keep, let's just keep our heads up, man. Let's just, let's just keep it up, keep working, keep putting the work in on both jobs. So that way eventually we can make money doing both. There's nothing wrong with having multiple jobs, multiple sources of income. And for those of us who are creatives or are not creatives, but are looking to get into the social justice space, we know what that's like. Um, so I would just implore you to please yeah, and for those of us who, who are either looking to get into the social justice field or are already well established in the social justice field, you know what that's like and you know what kind of life that is. So my my encouragement, my suggestion to you is just practice self-care. Uh, still keep your head up, still put in the work, still organize, still fight, do it safely, but really practice self-care and take care of yourself because I know that's, that's a definitely hard thing to do. And lastly, creatives, because I, I spoke to professional social justice, but creatives, just keep pushing. All you need is one, and then you just gotta keep up the momentum. Um, and even if you don't have one, you know, all you all you need is one. Um, and I think that's something that we all realize as creatives, all we need is one. So just keep putting content out there, oversaturate the market with your work, keep working, keep grinding, keep hustling, and it'll all come together. Uh, that's my memoir. It is August, it's August, I don't know, I don't know what day it is. It's August something. I'm gonna say August 16th. I'm gonna say it's August 16th. I'm probably wrong. You'll see the date up here, it doesn't matter. Here's what we'll say. August 2019, 3.41 p.m. Uh, memoir's over. Keep your head up, keep grinding, practice self-care. Check out my website, ericwashington.net, or if you wanna check out my professional e-portfolio, that is ewashington.info, check me out like share subscribe follow all those good things wherever you're seeing this whether it be youtube facebook instagram yeah and just tell me what you think use that comment section and use it well all right i'm out thank you